family, can you help me celebrate the life of Miss Jenny Anderson? Oh, we can do a little bit better than that. Let's stand to our feet and salute this wonderful life of love, of laughter. Amen. Thank you so much. Again, family, welcome to Fellowship Chicago. And on behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Reginald Wayne Sharp Jr., our deacons, our staff, our officers, and our entire membership, we want you to know, family, we love you and we're praying for you. And we're just glad to be able to support you during this very difficult time. Family, again, we want to thank you for coming to show your support. And we will follow the order of service as it has been printed in your bulletin. We'll have a musical selection by Mr. Boyce Hudson. Following that, we will have the Old Testament scripture reading by Minister Bonnie Fulgham. We'll have New Testament scripture reading by Deacon Danelle Baker. Following that, we'll have prayer by Pastor R. Jerry Protho of the Unity Baptist Church in Gary, Indiana. Then we will have a resolution read by Ms. Rena Bowman, and I shall return after that. Let the church say amen. I know this is a hard time, but look at someone to say, hold on. Is filled with swift transition. On oh, none on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. reading comes from the Old Testament, Job chapter 19, verses 25 and 26. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God. This is the word of God for the people of God.
Good morning. New Testament scripture reading from the book of John, 14th chapter, verses 1 through 4. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Let us all bow our heads in a moment of prayer. To God, our Father, Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. We gather here this morning, Father God, as we come to pay the respects of this legacy of Miss Anderson. We pray, O oh God, for you said in your word, we are to comfort one another. Comfort one another with these words as we pray for this entire family. We thank you, O oh God, for her life. Thank you for the memories that we cherish that are in our hearts and souls forever. We thank you, O oh God, for sustaining this family and giving them the strength that they would need during their hour of bereavement. But we thank you, O oh God, that we have a faith that is stronger than death. For we know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. As we pray on this morning for this family, we pray for the comfort of the word of the true and living God. We pray for the pastor, the angel of this house, as he prepares himself through that of the Holy Spirit to bring comforting words as we celebrate the life and the legacy of this great woman. We thank you for all the children and the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren and all the family and even this church, oh God, that she had had the opportunity to share her love with each and every one of us. Now, God, we just pray that you would give us the strength and give us the endurance during this time of comfort to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord and as we celebrate her life we know that this is not the end for those of us who are in Christ Jesus for we pass from death to life and we'll be so ever careful to continue to pray even when we end this service on today that we continue to lift this family up providing them with the need to carry on and let us be faithful in serving the true and living God. For God is good. And God is good all the time. And all the saints together shout it out. Amen and amen. Resolution, Chicago, Illinois, Friday. September 30th, 2022. The pastor, administrative staff, officers, members, and especially the ambassador's ministry of the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church takes this time to express our love to the entire family of our member, Sister Jeannie Anderson. The death of a special loved one creates its own unique emotional turmoil. Separation and tears are constant companions throughout our lives. When ties of love are broken, tears flow freely, and this is as it should be. But we know God gives special grace for special needs, and his spirit is quick to reinforce our wounded hearts. Being an effective comforter sometimes calls for words of encouragement. 
but at other times it requires nothing more than our love and prayers. One of the worst things we could do today would be to try to comfort you with a prepared speech full of religious words. All you really need to know is that we love you, we share your grief, we are praying for you. Lovingly submitted by the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church, the late Reverend Dr. Clay Evans founder, Charles Jenkins, Pastor Emeritus, Reginald Wayne Sharp, Jr., Senior Pastor. Amen. Amen. We will now have remarks from Mr. Wayne Bourne, followed by tributes from the family, Mr. Stephen Jones and Mr. Michael Jones. We'll have another selection from Mr. Boyce Hudson, and then we will hear from heaven through our pastor, Reginald Sharp Jr. Please come in that order. If you are speaking from the audience, we ask that you come to this podium to my right, your left, and please try your best to keep your remarks to two minutes. Amen. Good morning, fellowship and uh, families and friends of uh, my Aunt Genevieve. Uh, I want to thank the entire family for allowing me to get up here and just say a couple of words about my auntie and the special life that she lived because in today's climate, you know, people are having difficulty trying to raise their children with all these different distractions going on. And my auntie had... 13. So in order to keep 13 children in line, that's something special. So the word talks about being absent from the body, present with the Lord. Uh, my auntie today is, uh, she's our angel and she's looking over us and she's looking down on us. And I want to thank each and every individual cousins of mine you know, for the work that they had to to keep my auntie and to sustain her and help her, you know, through her challenging times. And these are challenging times for you all. So I would say to you, let us all put away little petty differences, you know, and come together as a, a family because we're going to need each other in order to, you know, deal with this. That there is love. We are loved and we will continue to be loved and promote peace within the family. Uh, uh, Anne, the wife of Alan, could not make it here today. She would ask me to just say a couple of things. The, uh, she really wanted to be here, but unfortunately be, because of her accident, she couldn't make it, but she said her prayers and her hope and her wishes is that the family is sustained and that they know that she love them and that uh, she speak peace and blessings to the entire family. And on the behalf of the Bournes and Parkers, we extend our entire love and, you know, just peace and sympathy to the entire family and hope that if there's anything that we could do that, you know, please feel free to ask us and we'll be there for you. God bless you all. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I have a sharp pain in my heart right now, but I'm grateful and blessed to have a queen and call her my mom. And uh, I just like to thank my brother for all the hard work he did. And uh, he did a great job. You're awesome, Alan Jones. You're awesome. And the support cast he had with the rest of the family. <laughs> you know, he couldn't have did it without the family. So, uh, you know, she was wondering and uh, asking, you know, how she going to get up them stairs again. But this time, 
her father came and picked her up and carried her up them stairs. So uh, I'm not going to be long with this, and I'd like to thank everybody for coming, and I love you all. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Stephen Jones, uh, Mama's third oldest son. And I came across a poem I believe my mother would like me to share with you all. It's called, I Am Free. <clears throat> I am free. Don't grieve for me, for now I am free. I am following the path that God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, or play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found that peace, or I found my peace at the close of the day. If my leaving here has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss, Oh yes, these things I too will miss. But be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life has been full. I have savored much, good friends, good times in my loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief, but don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your hearts and share with me. God wanted me now. God wanted me now. He has set me free. Amen.
know that God will take care of you. Oh, through every day, along, along life's way, He will, He will, He will take care of you. for word of prayer. God, we thank you for the promise that you will take care of us. Your word tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5 that we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. So even now, God, we thank you that you care for this Anderson family. We thank you that you know these children, these grandchildren, these great-grands, these extended family members. You know them by name. And so, God, we ask that although mama's gone and grandmama is gone, we just ask, God, that by your grace and by your strength that you would take care of this family, continue to fill them with peace, joy, and unity. Continue, God, to cover them under the shadow of your almighty wings. We thank you, Lord, that we can move forward into the unknown days ahead because you've promised to never leave us nor forsake us. You've promised to take care of us. So Spirit of the living God, move in this place as we remember this life well lived and have your way. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. If you're glad that God will take care of you, come on and let's give God some praise. Some of us have already seen God take care of us. Can I see the hands? Somebody can release a praise for about 10 seconds and just thank God for being the God that has taken care of you. Thank you, Brother Boyce. We appreciate your ministry. Would you help me thank God for our music ministry today that has lifted our hearts? Thank you to our executive pastor, our officiant today. We thank God for Reverend Fraser Pope to Pastor Prothro all the way from Indiana. We thank God for our clergy in both pulpit and pew. Can you help me thank God for these ministers? Minister Bonnie, Reverend Jamie, thank you so much for being here today. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made and we, we choose to rejoice and be made glad in it. I'm telling you, after a song like that, I really can just say, let the church say amen and we go on because that's the message. God is going to take care of us. That's how you're going to make it the the amazing surveillance of God. He keeps his eyes on us and he won't let anything happen that he's not aware of. I thank God for our bereavement ministry to our ambassadors, our media ministry to the Evans Funeral Home that have done such a phenomenal job in taking care of this family. Let's thank God for everybody that has made this day happen. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. There is a scripture that came to mind as I was reflecting on the life. I've heard her name pronounced two different ways. I heard Genevieve. I heard Jeannie. So I'm going to call her Miss Jenny. Did anybody call her Miss Jenny? Come on, holler at me now. Don't have me out here. Is Jenny all right? All right. You know, black folk, we, we have variations in our Ebonics. And so I heard two or three different ways today, but I'm going to stick with Miss Jenny. 
And I pray that that is appropriate. Acts chapter 13, verse 36. Acts chapter 13, verse 36. It reads like this, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep, fell on sleep, and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on asleep and was laid unto his fathers and laid into his fathers i want to talk today from this thought for about five minutes lesson from miss jenny's journey lessons from miss jenny's journey the text today reveals that king david after he had served his own generation by the will of god fell asleep i see some symmetry between david and miss jenny and so today I want to lift for you some lessons from Miss Jenny's journey. First of all, she served. Let the church say she served. The text says, for David, after he had served his own generation, fell asleep. I think it's important that the time that God gives you, you spend it serving. I told our church a few weeks ago, you've not been saved just to be soothed. You've been saved to serve. And the reason why at 95 years old, Miss Jenny's home going looks like it looks today is because she didn't just serve God. She served her family. She didn't just serve her family. She served her church. She didn't just serve her church. She served her community. And when you have lived a life serving people and helping people and making your life larger than just about you, then when it comes to the end of your life, people can stand to speak at your funeral and not have to find something to say, but they can reach into their heart and pull something genuine out to say, because when you spend your life serving others, that's when you make a difference in other people's lives. That's when you make God look good. I, I don't know if I'm making sense today, but so many people are selfish. So many people are self-centered, but the real Christians, those who embody the fullness of what it means to be a child of God, understands it's not about you. That if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can show somebody that they're traveling wrong, then my living will not be in vain. And there are about a hundred of us in this room and some online who can attest Miss Jenny Anderson's life was not in vain. We are all better because she passed our way. She served. Somebody say she served. But she didn't just serve, she surrendered. The text says that David, after he served his own generation by the will of God, stop right there, because some of us do what we want to do. Some of us spend our whole lives talking about, it's me, myself, and I. That's all I got in the end, but that's not the truth. I like Beyonce just like the rest of them, but they had it wrong. It's not about me, myself, and I. It's about surrendering to the will of God. God when you were born, before your mother and father came together, turned on some earth wind and started to fall, the fire, God, before your mother ever carried you in her womb, the text says in Jeremiah chapter 1 around verse 5 that before I formed you, I knew you and I sanctified you and I ordained you to be a prophet among the nations. You and I have a purpose and the purpose is to fulfill the will of God. Miss Jenny had a purpose and here's what I like about black sisters born in the 20s a lot of those black women did not have a lot of money but they had stuff that money couldn't buy they had a work ethic they had a resilience they had a commitment to God and their families and and I wish a whole lot of younger folk would understand it ain't all about money honey it ain't all about having stacks on deck it ain't all about bling bling you got to have a commitment to the will of God that says I'm going to spend my whole life doing all I can to honor God in the way I show up, honor God in the way I speak, honor God in the way I give, honor God in the way I take care of my family. You had to be in the will of God to raise 13 children. You had to be in the will of God to move from Tennessee to Chicago and every step of the way God kept blessing her life and adding to her life. Am I the only one talking to myself right now? Can I get a witness out there who can testify it's power in serving and surrendering and when you serve God and when you surrender to God watch this you can go to sleep in God 
The text says David served his own generation by the will of God. And keep on reading verse 36 of Acts 13. It says, and he fell asleep. Oh, that's a peaceful little scripture. After you've done what you're supposed to do, you can fall asleep. I talked to her daughter just last night and she told me that's how mama passed. That's how Miss Jenny went home. She went to the hospital, came home, and she passed literally in her sleep. I said, isn't that a peaceful way to go? After you've toiled down here, after you've worked down here, after you've given up your right for other people's wrongs, after you've sacrificed, after you've loved with your whole heart, after you've served, after you've surrendered to the will of God, one day we can go to sleep. And you can sleep peacefully at night when you know you've done all you could in the day. I just said something. I'm going to rewind because some of y'all missed it. You can sleep real peaceful at night when you know you've done all you could do in the day. Jesus said work while it's day because night's coming when nobody will be able to work. She served. She surrendered. She went to sleep. And in her sleep, something shifted. The text says at the end that David saw corruption. Another version said he saw decay. Literally means that his body began to decay after he died. But for the child of God who has accepted Jesus. Here's a scripture we all know for God. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That come on whosoever believeth in him. Come here. Shall not perish but have everlasting life some shifted when she fell asleep and the best way i can explain this to you is kind of what used to happen to me when i was a little boy when i was a little boy younger than six or seven while my daddy could still carry me without hurting his back i remember going to sleep on the way home i would go to sleep on the way home and somehow i would wake up in the morning in my bed and this kept happening. I, I would be to sleep in the back seat and I wake up and I'm in my bed. And one morning I asked my daddy, how did I get in the bed? The only thing I remember was going to sleep in the car. Who put me in the bed? He said, well, while you were asleep, you were sleeping so good. I picked you up in my arms, carried you up the steps into the house, took your day clothes off, put your pajamas on because I didn't want to interrupt your sleep. Some of y'all not paying attention, but those who are are catching me right now. My daddy, while I was sleeping in the car, picked me up in his arms, walked me up the steps. Somebody just said it a minute ago, walked me up the steps, laid me down, took off whatever I was wearing, put on my nighttime clothes and allowed me to wake up in my house in the morning. That's what happened to Miss Jenny a few days ago. She fell asleep down here and God saw she was sleeping really good. No more dementia. No more worries about her health and her fragility and old age issues. God took her up in his arms. Walked her up the steps into eternity. Took off corruption. Took off all the aches and pains of this world. Put on a new body and laid her down so she could rest. Something shifted. Can I tell you what shifted she left the land of some more and went to the land of no more y'all still sleep I said she shifted from the land of some more and made it to the land of no more see while we're still down here we're living in the land of some more you gonna hurt and you gonna hurt some more people gonna lie and they gonna lie some more we gonna have to wear masks now and I believe we gonna have to wear masks some more you gonna have enemies and you gonna have some more I'm just waiting on 30 y'all to start talking to me preachers will start preaching when y'all start talking back to them you gonna have some hurts down here and you're going to have some more you're going to have bad days down here and you're going to have some more you're going to cry down here and you're going to cry some more you're going to have some midnights down here and you're going to have some more but one of these old days when we keep on serving after we've surrendered after we sleep something's going to shift and we're going to leave the land of some more and we're going to the land of no more and if you can't shout over that you can't shout over nothing well tell me about the land of no more I'm so glad you asked where she's going there are no more tears because there is no pain there are no hospitals because there is no sickness there are no police because there is no crime there are no ambulances because there are no emergencies there are 
no vaccinations because there's no more COVID. There are no handicapped parking because there are no more ailments. There are no tissue in heaven because there are no tears. And there's no more preaching in heaven because there is no sin. Somebody ought to rejoice that some glad morning when this life is over, I will fly away. Go into a place. Oh God, celestial show. Somebody give God a three second praise because when we get through serving and surrendering, we gonna fall asleep and we go into a place where the wicked will cease from troubling. Y'all forgive me, I'm sorry. Where the weary will be at rest. Where Donald Trump can't be president anymore. Go into a place. Reach over and touch somebody's hand and say, neighbor, I know it hurts today, but one of these days, I shall wear a crown. When it's all over, I'm going to put on my robe. Like Miss Jenny and tell the story how I made it over. God, we thank you today for the lessons of Miss Jenny's journey. Thank you that she served. Thank you that she surrendered. Thank you that she fell asleep. But more than that, God, we thank you that when she fell asleep, some shifted. She shifted from the land of some more and stepped over into the land of no more. Thank you for carrying her in your arms so she can make it up the steps one more time. We honor you, God, for her life 95 years. We honor you, God, for these children, the 11 who remain. We thank you that all is well. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. Amen and amen. Help me thank God for mama one more time. Come on, help me thank God. I shall wear a crown. I shall wear a crown. Evans is coming at this time. We're on our way to Oak Ridge Cemetery. Evans is coming at this time. Those who've been selected to help us carry the flowers, our flower bearers, would you come at this time? Thank you so much. When it's all over. We need seven flower bearers. Thank you so much. I shall see his face. Family, would you stand? Would you stand at this time? Thank you, family. Everyone stand up. Tell the story.
How I made How he brought me over I've been serving How he kept me I've been surrendering And how he brought One day I'm going to sleep I'm, I'm gonna, gonna put, put over on my robe oh. Yes And tell the story, the story Up sometimes How I made it over Had to cry sometimes how Lost I sleep sometimes 